Okay, um, thank you for inviting me. So my name is uh, Thomas Böcklin. I'm the founder and uh, main developer of uh, Electrum. Is Electrum is one of the oldest Bitcoin wallets. And I'm going to talk about uh, our Lightning implementation and how it differs from other wallets. So the talk is titled 50 Shades of Custodial. And that's because you certainly know the distinction between uh, custodial and non-custodial. It's very easy when you have an on-chain wallet. But with Lightning wallets, uh, for reasons of user experience, um, wallet developers have taken steps uh, that are making this distinction more difficult. So uh, there is a lot of things in uh, Lightning wallets that are not completely trustless. So uh, this is my uh, PGP fingerprint. And uh, Electrum was uh, founded uh, in 2011, so we are 10 years old now. Um, it's one of the oldest uh, Bitcoin wallets around. Um, and the idea is that uh, Electrum was created in order to make a wallet that is easy to use, that is non-custodial, and uh, that is for users who do not want to run a node. So they uh, typically, uh, we assume that the users do not want to roll a full node, and uh, in, the, in the Lightning world, uh, that also implies that uh, you don't want to run a full Lightning node all the time. Uh, so we are trying to deploy an infrastructure made of Electrum server that takes care of the rest. Okay, before I start, um, where should I point this? Yeah, okay. I just wanted to announce that uh, since the beginning of this year, our builds are reproducible. So uh, that means that, uh, I mean, we have been reproducible for, for Windows and Linux for a long time, but now it's also the case for Android and for macOS. So the, the releases, the binaries are signed by multiple, uh, multiple developers. And uh, I used to be the main signer. Now uh, it's not possible to do a release with only my, my key, my signature. And that's a big relief for me in terms of security because uh, it's, uh, it's useless to point a gun at me and to ask me gently to make a malicious release. Uh, similarly, we also have a protection on our website. So I no longer have the keys of the website. Um, when we create a new release, we have a machine, a script on the website that is checking that the release is signed by multiple developers. And uh, if there is a need to access, uh, to have root access to this website, um, I can do it, but uh, I don't have the key with me. I need to basically fetch the password in a, in a vault in a bank. <laughs> and this bank has opening hours and has, has people that check that it's actually me. Okay. I'm doing this announcement on uh, all of my talks now. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the reason why I started Electrum is because um, I think that uh, it improved the Bitcoin ecosystem. There was at the time this uh, dichotomy between having a very, uh, having a full node, having a, a f the, basically the, the Satoshi uh, Bitcoin full node, and uh, having a web wallet that had no security. So uh, Electrum, tries to give the same user experience as a, um, as a light wallet, but without the risk. That's, that's our philosophy. So we are trying to make uh, light clients as safe as possible, but uh, without being custodial. Okay, now that we have Lightning, we also had COVID. So with COVID, we had two years to do only development. And uh, this was very good for, for our Lightning implementation because there was basically nothing else to do. Um, so we came up with a, with a Lightning implementation. Um, oh my God, the slides are terrible. Um, yeah, okay. That's fine. <laughs> um, so my belief is that off-chain is the only reasonable scaling proposal for Bitcoin and for blockchains in general. Um, I mean, you can have also side chains or multiple blockchains, but if you look at a particular blockchain, the only way to scale it is off-chain. Uh, at least that's my opinion. 
Um, so Lightning creates a new set of challenges in terms of uh, user experience, and uh, we have to compete with other wallets that, uh, well, with custodial wallets that do not have all those issues created by Lightning. Uh, so those issues are, for example, uh, liquidity in your channels, yeah, or uh, how to manage your channels, how to open your channels. You also have to be online all the time in order to get the, the gossip that is going to allow you to find a path on the Lightning Network. So all those challenges are new, and uh, custodial wallets, of course, don't have them, so they have a much better user experience. So our model in Electrum is that uh, we have an infrastructure that is a set of Electrum servers, and those servers are not run by us, the company, they are run by volunteers. So that means that those servers have to be trustless. We cannot accept a server that would uh, be in a position to harm you. So that's the reason why, um, I mean, the reason why we do that is uh, we do not want to be in a position where law enforcement uh, asks us about a certain particular transaction, so it's better for us not to run the servers. Um, at the same time, uh, we also don't want, yeah, we don't want to be a single point of failure, both technologically and legally. So for the Lightning implementation, uh, yeah, we try to, to keep this philosophy of, um, of uh, doing the hard work but keeping the private keys in the client. And uh, I'm sorry, I cannot read my own text and I don't remember what was there, but never mind. <laughs> so, not your node, not your coins. That's the, philosoph that's the new, uh, not your private keys, not your coins. That, that's uh, what happens in Lightning. In the Lightning network, you need to have a Lightning node if you want to transact. And having a Lightning node means, um, it means basically that uh, your wallet is going to be one of those four categories. Uh, the first category is a full Lightning node. So you download LND or C Lightning or Eclair, and uh, you're going to have a full node. And this is kind of uh, reserved for technical users. I mean, you, mean, you need to have some technical knowledge in order to do that. In addition, you need to have some infrastructure. You need to be able to have a node that is online all the time. Now, the other option for a wallet, if you only want to be a wallet, is uh, to be a front-end to another node, and you have two cases. I mean, you can be a front-end front to a node that you do own and uh, to a node that you do not own. And it's important to know in which situation you are. For example, if you use a blue wallet, which is a very popular light, uh, lightning wallet, um, the, the blue wallet is non-custodial if you run your own node. But if you do not do that, which is the case of most uh, new users, because they get onboarded, they use the default setting, then um, there is a non-chain part of the wallet that is non-custodial, and the lightning part is using a node run by the company. So your private keys are not going to be there, are not going to be in your wallet. They are going to be held by that company, and the lightning part of your wallet is actually custodial. So you have, I mean, most of the lightning wallets that are around are one of those three cases. Now, what we did with uh, Electrum, and that's also the case with uh, Phoenix and Declare Mobile, is um, we are a lightning node that is designed to be lightweight. So in order to do that, you have to come up with your own implementation of the lightning protocol. So this is why it took us two years to, to develop that. We cannot just launch LND and, uh, and connect to it. Um, so, um, again, I have a problem reading, reading the text that has been uh, destroyed here. Um, but anyway, so Electrum, Phoenix, and Nuclear Mobile, they do share the fact that uh, the channel logic is implemented locally, the private keys are local, 
but uh, there is some extra logic to, to alleviate the need to be always online so that you can have a wallet that just you uses private channels, comes online, does a transaction, and uh, goes away. So, for example, you don't need to sync the gossip uh, because we use the trampoline technology, these kind of things I'm going to talk about. So, yeah, here is the list of things that uh, we have to examine. So, these are the things that um, we want to delegate uh, in order to improve the user experience. Uh, first, being a full Bitcoin node. That's what we already did with Electrum in the past. Um, with the network of Electrum servers. So you are already familiar with that. Now with Lightning, the first issue is uh, pathfinding. When you want to do a payment through the network, you need to find a path. And for that, you need to have up-to-date information about the Lightning network. The problem is that this graph changes frequently. This information gets outdated quickly. And it's not small. If you run a mobile wallet, you cannot afford to download this every time you do a payment. And if your information about the graph is outdated, most of the time uh, you will have a low success rate in your payments. So for this, um, we use a technology that uh, is called Trampoline. It's uh, been developed by Async, uh, and it's used in the Phoenix wallet. And um, we use it too. Uh, now that we are two wallets that use trampoline, we have increased, uh, we have multiplied by three the number of trampoline nodes in the Lightning Network. So that means uh, you can also have more privacy because you can route payment through multiple trampolines, which was not the case with the async node. Um, yeah, being online is also always uh, important with Lightning because uh, if you have a Lightning channel, the other party can cheat. If you're offline, they can close the channel with a, with a revoke state if they know that you're going to be offline for a long time. So uh, there are multiple ways to address that. Uh, Phoenix does it by trusting the remote node because they are their node. I mean, Phoenix uh, uses the async node and this is uh, basically the model is that they trust this, but it's a massive uh, single point of failure. So that's against uh, our philosophy. Um, so instead of that, we have an implementation of a watchtower. I'm going to talk about that later. Liquidity. Um, if you have channels, you need to take care of their liquidity. That means a channel can be exhausted either in the sending or in the receiving direction. And uh, so we have a service of uh, submarine swaps in order to do that. So we exchange, we swap uh, lightning coins for on-chain coins. Another way to address that, and that's what Phoenix does, we might also as well do that in the future, is this feature where they open the channel for you. Um, but. Yeah, I have to justify the title of my talk. So, so far I g I've given you four shades of uh, custodial. Uh, now there is another one with this op pay to open. Um, because if you want to receive a uh, lightning payment and you have zero channel, so the, the pay to open feature is going to, the, the node is going to receive the payment for you. And with that money, they are going to open the channel to you. So that means that you trust them they are custodial for 20 minutes. So it's not very, very bad. I mean, it's OK to trust someone for 20 minutes, I guess. But still, it's not trustless. Um, oh, and the final thing is channel backups. Uh, so most wallets have solutions based on Google Drive. Uh, Phoenix has a smarter solution. Uh, they encrypt the channel state in the blob that is sent to the remote node. So again, they trust their node as a, taking care of the backup. What we do in Electrum is uh, we use uh, the blockchain. So when you open a channel uh, with Electrum, there is an op return that contains some encrypted information that allows you to retrieve the coins in your channel. Yeah, OK, so this slide is a bit redundant with what I just said because but you can't see it because the text is mangled. Anyway, 
So uh, this is just what I said. Yeah, the, the last point is that channel funds can be recovered from seed in Electrum, uh, but not the channel state. So if you rec restore the Electrum wallet with its channels from the seed, uh, you can still get the funds, assuming that the remote node is still there, but that's just a static backup. You won't be able to use the channel anymore, and you're going to lose the, the mining fees. Okay, the last part is the watchtower. So, um, I don't know if you are familiar with this ID. A watchtower is a node that is watching the channels for you, where you are, when you are not online. So the idea here is that uh, it's an entity that has transactions that you pre-sign, and those transactions are des designed to punish the remote node in your channel if the remote node is trying to cheat. So this allows you to be offline for, uh, for a long time. And um, there are multiple uh, schools of thoughts about how to implement a watchtower. So what we have done is what I call a private watchtower, meaning that the, the watchtower does not scale. You cannot open it to the entire world and uh, use it uh, to watch transactions of, uh, of a lot of people because it's using a lot of uh, disk space. So instead, uh, either you configure this for yourself or you come up with a business model where you charge for this service. Uh, but uh, as telling the world that you're going to be their watchtower for free, forever, and you're going to keep that, the, their pre-signed transactions forever is a no-go in my opinion. Yes, um, currently in Electrum, the Watchtower is uh, part of the client, and uh, our goal is to move it to the Electrum server. That will be for the next uh, release. So, our future plans is also to upgrade the Electrum server protocol, uh, because uh, the, the protocol that we used was designed before Lightning, there are inefficiencies in it. And uh, now, I mean, we took two years to implement Lightning. Um, yeah, in, in software development, there are phases of expansion where you add new features, and then you have to digest the features that you have been adding. So what we need now is really to digest our own Lightning implementation. That means to integrate it better. We, do, we did not realize that the Watchtower, for example, was going to be uh, a server-side feature than, rather than a client-side feature. Uh, initially, my thought was, okay, it belongs to the client because it's private, but actually, the definition of the Electrum client is that it's not always online. So, uh, currently, you would need to configure a daemon for that, and that's not user-friendly. So, we're going to to move this uh, watchtower to the server. Uh, we're going to replace SSL also with Bolt 8. SSL has been a big, uh, a big problem for us because it makes it more complicated to deploy your own Electrum server. You need just to sign a set, to create and sign a certificate. Basically, our goal would be that you just need to type apt-get and uh, apt-get Electromix and you're done. And finally, uh, we also want to accept LN payments immediately, uh, a little bit like, like Phoenix does. So this is this pay to open thing that I was talking about. But like I said, it's introducing a little bit of custodial uh, aspect there. So uh, we are still exploring the different options for that. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Big round of applause, please, for Thomas. Thank you so much. Well done.